Water is the greatest force at work on the canyon. Water seeps into the stone crevices, alternately freezing and thawing. Cracks appear, and eventually the rock splits. This alternate expansion in the sun's heat and contraction in the cool night air helps to crumble the stone. Gravitation works incessantly on the canyon walls. Water and rain sweep tons of material toward the river and out to sea. These ordinary processes of nature account for the canyon's great size. The layers of shale, limestone, and sandstone that make up the strata of the canyon walls are called formations. Each has certain characteristics that distinguish it from the strata above and below. Their story is the depositing of layer upon layer of sediments by water and wind, of mountain building and the tearing down of mountains. Nature performs this work slowly but irresistibly never taking a day off to rest. Descending into the canyon's depths, time falls away into one vertical mile down the inner walls of the gorge. The earth reveals her geological soul here in an area called the Vishnu Schist. We journeyed two billion years into the past. The oldest rocks found in this V-shaped granite gorge were originally sediments deposited by the sea, then uplifted into mountains. The great forces of pressure and high temperatures changed the sedimentary rocks into metamorphic types called gneiss nice and schist. The older rocks subsided and were again covered by a shallow sea. Fossils of algae and fungi captured eons ago are evidence of early plant life. The second major era of the Earth's history began about 570 million years ago and endured for about 350 million years. Layers of sandstone, shale, and limestone were formed by the deposits of an advancing sea. This period witnessed a wealth of life forms in the world's oceans, life forms that were never to be repeated in our planet's evolution. Within these three rock layers, we can see the very beginning of invertebrate life on Earth. We also see traces of the first creatures with backbones, various species of fish. One of the most prominent cliff forms in the canyon is the red wall of limestone. Formed by the remnants of marine life in the sea, its true color is gray. The red coloring is from layers of rock higher up in the canyon. In a climate that was becoming relatively arid, the Grand Canyon remained in a marine environment. River sediment sandstone, containing the imprints of ferns and fossilized amphibian tracks, is overlaid by hermit shale and then the vertical cliff of Coconino sandstone. Sand deposited when the region became a desert. Seas inundated the land, not once, but twice. Their residue created the Toro Weep and the Kaibab formations. In the Mesozoic era, which lasted 100 million years, the Grand Canyon became many environments, deserts, seas, and swamps. This was the age of dinosaurs, the era of flying reptiles. Erosion has removed much of the rock of the Mesozoic era, but Cedar Mountain remains as a prominent remnant of Mesozoic rock. Our current era of geologic time, the Cenozoic, began about 65 million years ago. A large section of the American Southwest was pushed high above sea level, and the Colorado River began to carve the grandest canyon on the face of the Earth. 